So yeah, I just want to do one more video talking about the veganism thing. It probably won't be that long because my battery's almost running out, I think. But um, yeah, I just want to look at in, in the other group, you know, in, in the other few, I've done a few videos now. Um, yeah, veganism, it means a lot to me because I'm quite passionate about it. You know, I think, you know, um, you know, I, I think, you know, do you have a moral obligation to be vegan? I, I'm think, I think I think a lot of people do, especially if you're a minority group. I won't go right into that now, but I've already said that. But, you know, if you're a minority group or whatever, or if you're anyone, if, you, if you're anyone who cares, you know, generally vegans tend to be kind of women, younger women or whatever. But, but no, I think that people do have a moral obligation to go vegan if you consider yourself an animal lover, if you've been around dogs most of your life, if you have, like, a pet dog who you really care about or a cat or you take photos of them and everything and you kiss them and everything, you take them for walks and stuff. Why, why, you know... You know, all these animals that we farm for food and stuff, they're equivalent, all are the same in all the ways that matter. You know, they have hearts, they have eyes, they have brains, they have lungs, they sleep, they recreate, they procreate, they give life birth, they have the same gestation period. You know, they're very biologically equivalent to us. I mean, animals are animals, aren't they? Conscious living beings living life subjectively through their eyes. I mean, animals are animals, mammals are mammals, birds are birds. We all have the same organs, really. Even a worm has the same organs as other things. But no, you know, so just think of it in that perspective and think about how similar we are. Like, even like a little you know, a little squirrel, you know, that has eyes, brains, heart, lungs and everything. You know, these animals, you know, they're conscious beings. You know, the ones we find, they're conscious beings. I can't believe I can't be factory farming. I still can't believe the extent to which we do it. I never will. It absolutely baffles me the way we have factory farming sentient beings. I mean, seeing them nothing more than just commodifying them. And yeah, I think it's absolutely unbelievable. But yeah, you know, do you have a moral obligation? I think, I think, I think everyone does really, especially if you're, if you've been around sort of oppression or whatever, or, you know, um, you know, if you've experienced oppression firsthand, I mean, what what what's the difference that uh, oppression that uh, you know, say a black person or a Jewish person or, or an LGBTQ person has, you know, if if that person's getting discriminated against, you know, what what that's pretty, pretty much what we're doing to certain species of animals, you know. So you know, what's what's the difference? What's the difference between me and you? Just like the son of Dr. Dre, what is the difference? There is no difference. Animals are animals. As, as I said, you know, cows don't have iPhones. You know, cows can't drive. You know, chickens, sheep, they can't do they can't do that either. But what makes us the same is that we're all sentient beings with pretty much the same organs, and we and we want to avoid suffering, don't we? I mean, we, when you look at a sheep, you know they all sheep, cows, pigs, chickens, and everything. They all have, like I said, they have eyes, nose, lips. You know, it, it, it's the same, the same same organs. They have heartbeats. They sleep. You know, unless they're nocturnal. I don't think any of the farmers and animals be farming nocturnal. <laughs> I think it was the little gentle foxes and stuff. But um, no, you know, just just put it put it in a perspective. Put it in the obvious perspective. You know. Of you know, would, would you want that done to you? Would you want that done to your cattle dog? Would you take your cattle dog to be a euthanized in an abattoir? You wouldn't, would you? So why on earth would you pay for it to happen to another innocent being? That's why I would. I have to have a farm animal first before I get a cattle dog. So if I get a cattle dog, it's just to support the speciesism. Because the speciesism that we use for certain species of animals is the same as racism, sexism, anti-Semitism. It's the same. Why exclude one form of discrimination but support the other? That's the thing, you can't pick and choose which forms of discrimination are good and which are not, or which forms of discrimination are okay. So speciesism, species, oh, I think it's gone a bit light, but yeah, speciesism, is, is, that, is that okay, is it? Speciesism is fine. Thumbs up to speciesism. But racism, no. Anti-Semitism, obviously not. Sexism, no. But when it comes to speciesism, that's fine, isn't it? Oh, that's fine, yeah. Speciesism is the okay discrimination. It's not the okay discrimination. Speciesism is wrong. So that's what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to say, um, yeah, do you have a moral obligation to go vegan, especially when the minority group? I've talked talk more about minority groups now, even though I've already mentioned a lot about it. But we all have an obligation to be vegan, I think. We all have that obligation, especially we, look, we love animals. Like I said, we don't have the instinct to go up and kill an animal. We don't have that. We don't have that. that you know, we don't have the instinct, you know. Because uh, we're not really built for it anyway. We're not built like lions, are we? We look at our teeth, look at our claws. I mean, we have like. You know, we're not really built for it. We're built for like the chimpanzees in the jungle. Like I said, we have that moral obligation to treat others how we want to be treated. We have that moral obligation to realise what other innocent beings are going through. Like, what if you were reincarnated into a body of a pig or something, or a, sh or, or a chicken, you know, heaven forbid. But we have to have that moral obligation to do better once we know better. You know, also, you know, it's, it's, it's not hard. So I just hope people can, you know relate to what other animals are going through and see the, see the oppression. It's not hard, especially if you have a cattle dog. Most people can. Most people, you know, we've got so much plant-based options in the supermarket now. I think most people, it's not even just about the moral obligation to go vegan. It's about the, the ease, you know, I'm not asking people to eat lettuce for tea. Honestly, if, if, if there was no vegan alternatives, I, I, would, I wouldn't be a vegan. I'll be, I'll, be, I'll be eating fish still, probably. I might even eat, I'll, I'll probably just be eating fish. 
But because there's the alternatives now, we're not living in you know Middle East, we're not living in a third world country, we're not living in some like Africa or some poor parts of the world. We're living in England. England, you know, people come over to this country on boats to try and get over to this country. You know, this is a well-off country. You know, um, people, people, you know, people, people give anything to come to this country. You know, we, that's, that, my dad's always saying, "Got to be so lucky." But you know, it's easy. That moral obligation isn't, doesn't mean giving anything up. Is what I'm trying to say. The moral obligation means that you can still have what, whatever, eat whatever you, whatever you want. That's what I'm trying to say. So yeah, does everyone have a moral obligation to go vegan? Yes especially the minority groups, but everyone does, I think. Everyone who is a compassionate person who gives to the homeless on the street, everyone who's compassionate and can see what an innocent animal, because like I said, these animals are born innocent. They've done nothing wrong to deserve what we're doing to them. So pigs, cows, sheep, chickens, they've done nothing wrong. They, they don't want to walk to the floor of a slaughterhouse. They're innocent beings. They've done nothing wrong. When has a chicken ever hurt anyone? This is what absolutely breaks my heart. When has a chicken ever hurt anyone? This is what I'm going to end on. I'm going to end on the gentle, innocent chicken.